these sessions are about an hour uh, or an hour. Or so when we finish up in, in the next 45 minutes, we should have plenty of time to actually go through some of uh, the information that I think is critical to you as uh, someone that's attempting to understand the uh, the audit process. Okay. So chapter one and two really provides the framework of external auditing. And what we need to understand is that when we're talking about auditing, of course, I also teach the internal auditing course, but what we're talking about here is we're talking about external auditing. So external auditing, you notice the title here is Assurance Services. So keep in mind that what we do as auditors, as external auditors, is in the realm of what we call assurance services. So assurance provides, it's a word that really means something in terms of providing reliable information. Okay? So the broad concept of information is an enhancement of services that are provided by the CPA, or a certified public account. There's two two types to increase reliability of information and by putting information into a form or context that facilitates decision making. Now, the primary focus of what we're going to be talking about in this course is to increase the reliability of the information. Actually, I think the, the better word for this is to validate the reliability of information. And primarily what we're going to be focusing on is we're going to be focusing on what you see here, an audit of the financial statement. So when we talk about external auditing, what we are talking about is the external audit of the financial statement. Now, extended beyond this is, and in fact we're going to be talking about this in this course, is an examination or an attestation of the internal controls over financial reporting. So again, if you focus in here on this, so the key element is looking at the audit of the financial statement, or the audit of the financial statement, and the other piece is the examination or the, uh, the review of internal controls, primarily reporting to internal controls over financial reporting. There are other types of services there's other assurance services. An example of this is a CPA elder uh, review of some sort of online service. Uh, and then, of course, there are many non-assurance type services. But the point that we want to make is the fact that what we are really focusing on is attestation services. And in this course, our primary focus is the audit of the financial statement. Secondary to this, is the examination of internal controls over financial reporting. And the attestation services is what we're looking at here is we're looking at attestation, the information as a means to provide an attestation related to its reliability. And again, just make sure that we understand this is the primary focus of what we're looking at is the reliability of financial statements. There is an official definition of an attestation. A practitioner is engaged to issue or does issue an examination, a review, or agreed upon procedures. And we'll talk about some of these as we go through the course, but we're primarily looking at the financial statement, an examination of the financial statement. But the key word here is on a subject matter. So in our case, the subject matter is the financial station, financial statement, or assertions. So the key word here is assertions. Very important word, and we'll actually talk about assertions uh, fairly significantly through the course, about a subject matter that is the responsibility of another party, in this case, management. So what we're going to find out is that management is, in fact, responsible for the financial statement. They are responsible for the financial statement. Our role is to provide an opinion of the fair presentation of these financial statements. So in the attestation function, a couple things that we are focusing on here. 
is we're focusing on the fact that someone is responsible for the relative to the financial statement. Management is responsible for the financial statement is is in fact um, generally accepted uh, accounting principles. So GAAP is the suitable criteria. And what we as the CPA do is we gather evidence and issue reports. And work then becomes an organization related to the uh, fair presentation of the financial statement. Okay, so it is as simple as that. And uh, these are, in fact, all the pieces that we have in relationship to uh, the financial statement audit. It is established or developed by groups of experts. So as an example, is the generally accepted accounting uh, principles gap becomes the standards as the applicable financial reporting framework. We, I'm not going to spend too much time on this, uh, only to sort of explain that we are doing a number of things as a, an external auditor, okay? And we, we kind of view it this way. An examination is referred to as an audit. So in an audit, we are expressing an opinion. So in an audit of the financial statements, we are going to say, in our opinion, the financial statements uh, present fairly in all material respects. That is our opinion. So the level of assurance, we're going to say, is high. And again, almost everything that we talk about in this course is this audit or examination. There is also possibly a review that we're going to do. And a review is not giving a high level of assurance, it's giving a level, moderate level of assurance. And instead of expressing an opinion, we're going to say sort of the negative of that is we're going to say we are not aware of any material modifications that should be made. Uh, and finally, there is the whole concept of read upon procedure. Uh, and again, we'll, we'll talk about some of these again later on in the course. We're providing a summary of findings, and the level of assurance is low because we're actually not defining what we're going to be testing. The definition of what's going to be testing is coming from a, a third party. So this is what we talked about: is the gap, the material, the criteria is gap. And in this process is we are issuing a financial statement audit. And the financial statement audit is a part of the financial statement. So let's talk about the financial statement audit. This really defines what it is that we do as an auditor in relationship to this whole process. An auditor gathers evidence and provides a high level of assurance that the financial statements follow generally accepted accounting principles uh, or some other appropriate basis of accounting. The audit involves searching and verifying accounting records and examining other documents. And the one thing we want to really focus on is that what we are verifying is we are verifying transactions and account balances. And we're doing this, we're doing what is necessary I'm not, we're, going, we're not going to do more than necessary, but we're going to do what is necessary so that we can then issue an audit report that states what the auditor's opinion is, uh, what our opinion is. And again, our opinion is going to be based upon what we see as the opinion of the, uh, of the fair presentation of the financial state. When we focus on audit evidence, there's two things that we're focusing on, two primary categories. These primary categories are going to be transactions and account balances. So when we look at the financial statement, primarily when we look at the balance sheet and the income statement, what we're looking at is we're looking at account balances. So we're looking at balance sheet accounts, liabilities, assets, equity, and so forth. When we're looking at the income statement, we're looking at transactions. 
So you notice, and just kind of think about the balance sheet and the income state. The balance sheet is a snapshot in time in terms of what the account balances are. And that's what we're measuring. We are measuring any material misstatements related to the account balances. So we focus on account balances in these balance sheet accounts. On the income statement, while we all are looking at these from an account balance perspective, we're really looking at them from a transaction perspective. So as an example, on the income statement, the question is, did sales really occur? Have sales been reported for the appropriate amount? Have they reported costs and expenses been applied to the appropriate period? And have all expenses actually been recognized? So we're looking at transactions when we're looking at these income statement items. In the financial statement accounts, are they accurate? Are they properly classified? And are they summarized appropriately? And of course, the notes, are they informative, complete, and accurate? We certainly are very concerned about accuracy when it comes to uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the audit evidence. What creates demand for audits? Audit lends credibility to information by providing a, uh, what we're saying here, by reducing information risk, the risk that information is materially misstated. And this is actually is very important. And in one of your classes, you'll probably talk a little bit about what we call agency theory. So when we talk about agency theory, basically what we're saying is that management acts as agent for the owners of the, of the corporation. Okay, so the owners are the shareholders. They're, the shareholders are not actively participating in the management. So management is doing the job for the owners. Okay? Well, management has their own issues. They have their own agenda. And basically there is a disconnect. So there can be a disconnect between the agent owners, agents and the owners of the corporation. And from an owner's perspective, what you're looking for is information in regards to what management is doing. Well, that information is coming from the financial statement. We as an auditor are looking at that financial information as an objective, skilled partner in this process. And we are looking at this information and we are saying it is fairly presented or maybe it's not fairly presented. But the issue becomes is from management. They're providing the information. Management is responsible for the financial state. The owners and other stakeholders within the organization uh, are interested in the financial information, but they want to make sure that it's actually accurate. So what we're looking for and what the auditor does is in a systematic process is providing an opinion of the fair presentation of the financial statements. Now keep in mind that the auditor is not providing an opinion of whether management did a good or bad job. That's not the issue. The issue is that the auditor is looking at the financial statements from the perspective of are the financial statements fairly presented? And then the owners and other stakeholders can look at the information and then decide whether or not management is doing a good job. But the issue is that the auditor is reporting on the fair presentation. So financial statement misstatements are due to accidental errors, lack of knowledge, unintentional bias, as well as deliberate falsification. So management Maybe they're doing a great job in terms of management, not so great in terms of financial reporting. Well, we're going to find that out. But it's also possible that they are deliberately falsifying information and attempting to hide that from the stakeholders of the organization. It's our role as an auditor to identify what we're calling material misstatements 
whether due to error or fraud, and express an opinion of the financial statements. Audits do not directly address business risk or the risk that the uh, company will not be able to meet its financial obligations due to economic conditions or poor management decisions. Again, the point that we want to make is that we are not auditing management. We are auditing the fair presentation of the financial statement. But the one point that I do want to make is that uh, since 2002 that uh, the standards have changed substantially due to surveys Oxley. And we'll actually talk about that in the next chapter, but that's the primary point that we want to get from this uh, material. Okay, so let's go ahead uh, due to, uh, let's go ahead and jump to chapter two. Let me see if there are actually some slides that we wanted to cover here. Audit. No, I think uh, this is, I think what we talked about is what we talked about. What is the AICPA, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants? Well, the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants is the organization that we work with as CPA. So what is the uh, traditional role of the AICPA is to establish standards, research publications, uh, professional education, self-regulation. Now, here's the point, is that once Sarbanes-Oxley took over uh, in 2002 uh, law, much of the standard setting and regulation related to public company audits, uh, and public companies referred to as issuers, have been taken over by the SEC and the PCAOB. The PCAOB is the public Company Accounting Oversight Board, and in fact, this organization has a very strong role in relationship to uh, providing the standards for audits of publicly traded companies. The AICT Auditing Standard Board issues official pronouncements on audit matters for non-public companies, and you're going to see the term in the CPA uh, material. We're going to call these non-issues. They have, uh, the AICPA has a statement on auditing standards, the statement on standards for attestation and engagement, and you notice here the accounting review service, statement on standards for accounting and review services, and the standards for the compilation or review non-audit financial statements. Okay, some of the stuff we'll be talking about later on. Um, okay. So let's go ahead and jump to chapter two and continue this discussion in regards to material. There are three sets of auditing standards. The three auditing standards is the AICPA, which we just talked about, the auditing standards for non-public companies, or what we talked about as non-issuers. The PCAOB provides the audit standards for public company audits. And then we have the international auditing standards with differing levels of authorities depending upon uh, the authority within various companies or various companies. The Public Company Accounting Oversight Board uh, provides uh, standards related to auditing, attestation, quality control, independence, ethical standards for audits for public companies. The American Institute of Certified Public Accountants provides this for non-public companies. Uh, State Board of Licensures provides uh, uh, the license for the CPA and the license for the CPA firms to practice in this jurisdiction. So it's interesting. So when you apply for the CPA exam, you're actually getting permission from the State Board of Licensure and you have your license as a CPA in a specific state. Now, there's uh, the, the means of reciprocity between states is actually fairly easy. Uh, I actually have uh, my original license was from Pennsylvania. Uh, when I moved to New York, I, uh, through the reciprocity process, writing the key checks, is I was able to get the license in New York. So right now I have a license, a CPA license, 
both in Pennsylvania and New York. Okay. Now, there's no real reason for me to keep it in Pennsylvania, but uh, um, but I've been doing that. Okay. In fact, I just got an email from them today indicating that uh, this year I need to uh, uh, re-register because my certification ends uh, at the end of the year. Okay. So a couple of things that we want to point out is the Public Company Accounting Oversight Board establishes standards for audits of public companies that we've talked about here. So the PCAOB provides the audit standard. The, so the PCAOB is PCAOBUS.org. Um, and certainly one of the things you want to do is you want to take a look at the uh, career opportunity. This actually might be a very interesting organization for you to consider to be working at. But in terms of the auditing and attestation standards, one of the things that we want to look at is we want to look at these standards in terms of what is actually being offered. Uh, so we have very specific standards in terms of attestation and um, the, uh, the agreed upon procedures, financial reporting, and so forth. And in fact, if we go to general standards, which I'm not statement on standards, I think this is where we want to go here. Yeah, so the general standards, uh, the general standards are specific standards that we actually talk about and they're heavily tested within the CPA exam. So we actually have these general standards that are outlined in the TCAOB. The general standards include the, uh, that the engagement must be performed by a practitioner having adequate technical uh, training and proficiency in the attestation function. Uh, the engagement is performed by a practitioner having adequate knowledge of the subject matter, and you can see uh, some of these specific standards uh, related to the uh, standards of attestation uh, engagement. Okay? So as we go uh, back into the material, um, the point that we really want to drive home is that you need to understand what the PCAOB standards have specifically related to external auditing because, in fact, publicly traded companies must abide by these standards. Not publicly traded companies, we still need to understand the AICPA standards, but in any event, uh, in both cases, we need to understand what's taking place. Okay? Principles underlying the generally accepted auditing standards, the purpose of the audit, the premise of the audit, uh, personal responsibilities of the auditor, auditor's actions in performing the audit, and the reporting results of the audit. So it's actually go back to the specific standards that, uh, that we talked about from that web page. So the purpose of the audit is to provide an opinion of the financial statements, whether or not they are in accordance with the applicable financial reporting framework. So the framework is GAAP, and the applicable framework reports to uh, or corresponds to the suitable criteria of an audit engagement. The premise is that management have the responsibility to prepare the financial statements and to provide the auditor with necessary information and unrestricted access to the entity. So the idea is that management is responsible for the financial statements. They're not only responsible for the financial statements, but they're responsible for creating an environment of internal controls. Part of those internal controls is to make sure that they actually have the, uh, the information there, that it's being documented and supported with appropriate documentation, appropriate controls, and so forth. This information is what we as auditors audit. Now, the auditor is not employed by management. The auditor is employed by the owners or the shareholders of the organization. But part of management's responsibility is to provide the auditor with the needed information and unrestricted access to those in the entity 
that they are able to actually audit appropriately. The personal responsibility of the auditor is the auditor must have appropriate confidence and capabilities to perform the audit, including, and you notice this keyword here, is the ability to maintain a professional skepticism and exercise professional judgment throughout the audit. Now, what this means is that everyone in, involved in the audit must have this professional skepticism, this professional judgment. So the junior auditors that are actually reviewing specific information, specific transactions, they need to have this as they're communicating to the senior auditors. This needs to be in place as senior auditors are communicating to the manager. The professional skepticism and professional judgment needs to be in place. And finally, when the manager is communicating to the partner, everything needs to be in place so that, and if it's not, a, a junior auditor may be identifying things that don't seem quite right, but we got to get the job done and uh, we need to get out of there. And they're not exercising their judgment appropriately because they want to get the work done. Well, if that gap is missing, then that issue is not going to be communicated through the process. So when we say professional skepticism, and we've identified this here as a questioning mind and critical analysis of audit evidence. This is critical as we are looking at the audit. An auditor's action in performing the audit is to obtain, and the key word here, and we'll actually be explaining this uh, throughout the course, a reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free from error or fraud. We are not looking, we are unable to identify or to get absolute assurance. And why is this? Well, due to financial reporting. So financial reporting is not really absolute. There are many judgments. There's many things that management needs to do in terms of objective uh, decisions in preparing the financial statement. So the nature of the financial statement prevents us from having absolute assurance. The nature of the audit procedures. We are not looking at every transaction. We are looking at a sample of each transaction. And then the other issue is that we really need to conduct the audit within a reasonable period of time. So all of these functions, all these issues, really demands us to have a level of assurance that is below absolute. It is what we're calling reasonable assurance. And in fact, in the financial statements, we are going to report that we are providing reasonable assurance about whether the financial statements are free from material mistakes. The two key words are reasonable assurance, and the other key word is um, the material mistake. And these are things that we're going to be talking about through the, uh, the rest of the course. Reporting the results of an audit, we are expressing in a written form an opinion. So let's go through this. So we are reporting an opinion. And the opinion, or we can say that the opinion cannot be expressed. The opinion is on whether the financial statements are in accordance in all material respects with the applicable financial reporting framework. So the key word that we're going to see in the expression of the audit opinion is if in fact it is what we're calling an unqualified opinion or an opinion without qualification is that in our opinion the financial statements presented above um, are presented fairly in all material respects in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. So the key word is the financial statements are presented fairly in our opinion, the financial statements are presented fairly in all material respects. So we've talked 
uh, slide I showed you the PCAOB standards. There are general standards, standards of build work, and reporting standards. These standards only apply to audits conducted in accordance with PCAOB standards. The preceding principles replace the generally accepted auditing standards for non-public companies. The generally accepted auditing standards that we have here is that we have adequate technical training and proficiency. So what we're looking at here is we're looking at adequate technical training and proficiency. These are actually things that you're going to have to recall, uh, and these are heavily tested within the CPA exam. The next piece that we want to look at is we have an independent and mental attitude. So independent. So training, the next key word is independent. And when we go to the next one, is we're going to have due professional care. So when uh, I sat for the CPA exam, the training that I uh, took was that for the general standards, is we use the acronym TIP, Technical Training, Independence, and Professional Care. So those are the key terms that we're using to define the general standards. The standards of field work, so right here we're looking at the standards of field work, is the audit must adequate, uh, the auditor must adequately plan and properly supervise work. The auditor must obtain a sufficient understanding of the entity and its environment, including internal controls to assess the risk of material misstatements and to design further audit procedures. This is actually a mouthful, but it has some very specific elements related to that. And you notice it defines a process. So the process is that we need to understand the entity. So we're essentially doing a risk assessment of the entity. We understand the internal controls, and we're doing this to assess the risk of material misstatements. So the key is that we're looking at our risk assessment of the organization, we're looking at internal controls, and we're doing this to assess the risk of material misstatements. So once we de design or de determine the risk of material misstatement is that we're going to design further audit procedures. These further audit procedures are the things that we're going to use in terms of measuring monetary misstatements. So we need to think about the audit from the perspective of very specific steps. Risk assessment, internal controls, between the risk assessment and our internal controls, we determine the risk of material misstatement. We then determine what audit procedures we need to use to measure monetary misstatement. So it's critical that we understand the risk portion and then the measurement portion. The auditor must have sufficient appropriate audit evidence um, or a reasonable basis for the opinion. Okay, so we're looking for sufficiency in terms of our audit evidence. Key word here is sufficiency. We're not looking for an exhaustive amount. We're only looking for what is enough to give us a reasonable basis for our opinion. Standards of reporting, and this will be our last couple of slides here, is the standards of reporting state whether the financial statements are presented in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, identify circumstances in which such principles have been applied, and all disclosures are adequate unless otherwise stated in the report. Okay? So what we're saying in terms of standards of the reporting is we are providing an opinion of the financial statement. Keyword here is that we're saying financial statements. So we cannot issue an audit of the balance sheet, as an example. We have to look at the audit, audited financial statements taken as a whole. The balance sheet, uh, statement of equity, our income statement, uh, 
statement of cash flow. All of these are the statements taken as a whole, and we are expressing a, uh, an opinion of these statements. If, in fact, there are circumstances where such principles have not been consistently applied, then we would issue what's called a qualified report. So we, when we said unqualified, we're issuing the opinion without qualification. These financial statements present fairly in all material respects. If we have a qualification, what we're going to say is the financial statements present fairly in all material respects except for, and we identify what piece of the financial statement where the principles have not been consistently applied. And then finally, the uh, our audit also includes an audit of the disclosures. We want to make sure that those are adequate. And if they're not, then they're going to be identified in the, uh, in the report. OK. So I think we've covered what we want to cover. Um, we have a very good basis for understanding what the audit is. Um, we understand the general standards. We understand some issues related to the TCAOB. All of these things become important as we are, in fact, assessing uh, the fair presentation of the financial statement. And again, the reason we're doing the audit is to express an opinion of the fair presentation of the financial statement. Okay, so I thank you very much for your time and attention this evening. Uh, I think as we move forward with this uh, class and the go-to meeting, that these presentations will become more streamlined. I'm actually uh, excited to be working the, uh, w with this system, and I think everyone will, uh, will actually benefit from this. So everyone have a great evening. Uh, I think our next session is going to be uh, in two weeks. Uh, I will be posting this presentation so you have access to it. And thank you very much. I see some uh, faces that I, or some names that I remember from prior classes. So thank you very much. Everyone have a great evening. Okay, thank you.